for some Jeep Gladiator grill painting. We've got the headband on. It's time to get serious. everybody and welcome back to Rob Motive JT and today I am going to do some painting for the grill on my Jeep Gladiator. What I've got here, this is a grill actually that I had gotten for my Gobi Gladiator right here where I had the, the surrounds on here painted Gobi to match. They come black because I wanted to kind of frame in the grill. Uh, on the Gladiator now, the white one that I have, these are actually black because that's the way my mother liked them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull these off, I'm going to sand them, and I'm going to paint them brilliant white to go with the Jeep Gladiator that I have right now to frame in the grill. Now, this is a little more serious painting than I've typically done. Never done any kind of body work really painting before, so it's going to be a new experience for me. But first of all, let me show you how to get these off so that we can actually paint them. I'm not gonna paint them attached to this whole grill. So, on the back, and I'll point you guys down here, there are some uh, clips, if you will. You can see them all the way around the grill as well as little uh, pressure connectors, I guess. But these little white clips that you see around here, these white clips need to come off. They're what hold this on as well as the little pressure clips that are on these pieces themselves. So I'm going to see if I can't pull these off by hand. I'm not sure if my office fingers are strong enough, but we're going to find out. So let's give it a try. By hand, of course, is always better, much less likely to ruin things. And you see that one did come off pretty easily. So I suspect they all will. And it's very warm out here, uh, hence the headband. So everything is pretty pliable uh, when it comes to plastic, which I like, by the way. You got to have uh, pliability when you're messing with plastic, for sure. Okay. And the gnats are out here, of course, too. That makes things even more fun. There, we got those off. Looks like there are five of them. Oh, there are more. So, let's go up here in the corner. There's another one right here. Pull that one out. I imagine way down here, there's another one in the corner. We'll get that one off as well up here. That one might actually be broken, and that's okay because I actually bought some extras of these. So, I'm going to replace the broken one with a new one. Now, Let's make sure uh, we don't have to take any of the ones off in the center because we're not taking anything apart there. We're only looking at the surround part here. So that's everything. So I'll flip it over. Well, actually, we'll do it from the back. See if we can't get these off by pushing in the clips on the parts themselves. That should be pretty easy, I think. And there are two push pins here that you need to remove. The reason I say that is because they go over the ones on the side. So let me grab a screwdriver and we'll pull these push, push pins out then we should be able to get them all out. And that one actually broke off. Check that out. Fortunately, I have more of these as well. That one pulled straight out. That's what's supposed to happen. Now, should be able to just remove the other end. Which I did. And that's what they look like when they come out properly. So, I'm going to have to do something special on this one, then we'll come back on. So now, we should be able to remove the center piece, which will allow us to remove the side pieces much easier. Okay, here is the center piece one of the pieces we're going to paint. Yeah. Okay, there's one of the side pieces. And there you go. That takes all the pieces off. This we no longer need, so we're going to set it aside out of the way. All right, we've got all the pieces off, so next step is to wash them with soapy water. So I'm going to do that, clean them all up, 
And then we'll move on to the next step. The next step, I've got my makeshift uh, holder up here. I'm gonna hang the parts to paint them. That's my plan. Now, we've gotta clean them up. I've washed them off and I'm following some instructions that I got off of the web, of course, uh, from a, I think a pretty good painter. And the instructions say next to sand it off with some red scotch Brite. So, I'm gonna sand it down and then uh, we'll move on to the next part. So here we go. Just kind of scratch it up a little bit. And the whole idea behind this is to clean it up and to give the paint a place to adhere to. The primer in my case. I am going to prime them first. So just kind of going to sand them down a little bit, scratch it up, make the part look nice and nasty uh, before I make it look, hopefully, much better. So, let me get all the parts sanded and then I'll come back on. Alright, I've got them all dulled and sanded up. Now we're supposed to use a pre-cleaner to clean them off. I don't happen to have a pre-cleaner, so I'm going to use alcohol. So I'm just going to spray them with alcohol, wipe them down. We have gloves on now, trying to keep my skin oil off of the parts. So, just going to Try not to drop it, first of all. Just gonna kind of spray it off a little bit and uh, clean it up that way. I'm just gonna wipe it down. It's going to be my preferred method of cleaning. So, let me go ahead and do all that. After this, we're supposed to tack them off with a tack cloth to get any leftover dust or stuff on them. And then, I'm gonna hang them up and I'm gonna start painting. So, that'll be the exciting part. Okay, a little tack cloth action now, just to get any residual dust off, I guess. Um, can't imagine there won't be any dust floating around in here. It's not a clean room after all, but it is what it is. You do the best you can with what you've got. So let me finish this. We'll get them all mounted up there on my makeshift holder, and we'll be ready to do some painting. Okay, got the mask, safety first. Got everything set up, got the can well shaken, not stirred. Go ahead and pop the top and start spraying primer. Coat number one, two more to go. Okay, we've got all the primer and stuff on. I waited an hour for it to dry. Now it's time to paint. I'm going to put five coats on, uh, probably somewhere about seven minutes or so apart, and then we'll let it dry for, I think it's an hour, and then three coats of uh, clear. So here we go. Wish me luck. This is the critical part right here. Coat number one, I'm not real thrilled with how that's going on, but maybe it'll get better. 10 minutes, we'll put some more on. I've got four coats, I decided to go with four. My directions actually said three, but I went with four. This is what it looks like so far, and it came out really well. The paint looks to be smooth. I don't see any runs or glopping or anything crazy like that. Uh, but it doesn't look as brilliant white as the Jeep does out there, but that's what it's supposed to be. So maybe that will be the clear coat. Let's get you around to the back here. I guess it's probably just the lighting in here maybe. Uh, you can get an idea what it looks like there and there. It looks pretty good to me. So now we're supposed to leave it sit for about an hour or an hour and then three coats of clear, 10 minutes apart. And then we'll be done. And then I'm gonna let it dry probably inside, inside the house that is, for about a week, maybe a little more before I handle it. Okay, it's clear coat time. I'm about three hours into this project. So let's get the clear coat on, three coats, about seven minutes in between, and then I'll be done. That's it, I am done. Everything is painted and clear coated. You guys can see right here, hopefully it matches the truck. 
Um, it is brilliant white, so it should be the same. We shall see. Anyway, what I did was four coats of primer, four coats of paint, and four coats of clear. Probably about a three, three and a half hour job with all the waiting and drying and all that stuff. So they came out pretty well, I think. I don't see any imperfections yet. So we're gonna let them dry. I'm gonna take them in the house. I'm gonna let them dry, as I mentioned, for probably about a week, maybe a little more, just to make sure that they get a good hard dry to them. And then I'll show you what they look like and how to put them on the other grill. It's really just the reverse of what I did earlier, but stay tuned for the finished look. Also, real quick, I do have two additional channels, Rob Motive FST, all about my 2021 Tundra and my hunt for the new redesigned Tundra. And Rob Motive, all about my 2020 Toyota Tacoma. Check them out, and if you're interested, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.